hello everyone. Welcome to our first uh, open dialogue webinar of this year. My name is Allison Rogers and I am the editor of Collision Repair Magazine. I will be your host today for the next hour. Um, we've got a webinar today with Solera Autotex. Before we kick off though, I'm going to just do a couple um, housekeeping notes. We are recording this webinar, so there will be a recording sent to you after the session um, the, with, to the email that you provided on registration. Uh, we've got a great diverse audience today and a lot of things to talk about. Uh, we've muted the lines, but we will have 20 minutes at the end of the session for Q&A. So save your questions till the end, you can ask throughout and we're ready to uh, dive in. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. We've got David and Michelle, Car David Hosaki and Michelle Carone from Auditec uh, Solera Auditex. So I'm just gonna introduce our panelists a little bit, um, but thank you guys for being here, here with us today. We really appreciate it. We're happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just gonna ask a few questions to get started. Like I said, there'll be Q&A at the end of the session. So about 40 minutes of discussion and then 20 minutes at the end of the session to talk. So um, just to get started, how about we turn over to David and Michelle. Could you guys tell us a little bit about your backgrounds in the industry and how you've been involved throughout your lives? Oh, Michelle, I don't think I can hear you. I think you're muted. Can you hear me now? Sorry about there that. There we go. <laughs> no All right. So thank you. Um, yeah, I've been with uh, in the automotive insurance industry for nearly 30 years. Uh, started off as an adjuster with a national carrier back in the early 90s. Worked with in various capacities servicing the insurers. Uh, and then I joined Solera back in 2004, uh, where I led the sales team uh, of the collision repair division with my main focus around MSOs and independent shops. And that eventually evolved uh, to be in the VP of sales uh, in charge of growing both the insurance and shop business in Canada. Good stuff. And I'm Dave Hosaki. Um, I actually grew up in the industry. Uh, my grandfather started um, his, his body shop, the first body shop in 1958, actually started out of his garage. And then uh, we ended up having a second shop. So we ran two shops. Um, I was fortunate enough to work in both and, and manage them. Um, have also done some work with in telecom. So I've taken the two uh, things and the technology and the cars and put them together here at Auditex. Um, started off as a field service representative, um, went to tech support, uh, ended up building out our technical support in Canada, uh, then went to uh, to training as well as professional services. And now I am the product manager for Captor in Canada. Awesome. Yeah, you guys both have a lot of experience in the industry. I mean, David, you've been here since you were a kid, basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> but now we're in 2021. I mean, obviously, we all know it's kind of a crazy time right now. But what have you been hearing out in the field, both of you, from your customers? So what are the biggest challenges and trends we're dealing with right now in 2021? Uh, well, you know what? Shops today are, are still operational in Canada, although at reduced volumes, right? Secondary provincial. Sorry, just one second. Oh, you lost me, shot there for a second. Just bear with us for a moment. Sorry, guys. Sorry, just a slight technical difficulty. <laughs> no worries. Um, sorry, let me start over. So uh, shops today are still operational in Canada, although at reduced volumes. Secondary provincial lockdowns and take, are taking place to address the second round of COVID, uh, but that varies from province to province with local regulations. Uh, we're still experiencing volumes much lower than pre-COVID, uh, and with the second round, I don't anticipate those volumes coming back anytime soon. Um, these have been extremely challenging times for all, uh, but I have to say I'm, I am very proud to be part of this industry. Um, you know, every day on LinkedIn or Facebook, you name it, we're seeing different examples across the country and the industry from our colleagues and peers collaborating, working together to try and keep the industry moving forward. So, you know what, I'm very proud to be part of this industry. Yeah, that's completely the mindset here at our magazine as well. I mean, it's been really inspiring to see everyone come together in times like this. I mean, go Canada for just being so on top of it and everything here. Uh, we've always been an industry to keep connected and it's definitely shown in the last uh, year. But those are all great points. Um, it really leads me on to my next point here, though. In challenging times, how do we keep claims, claims initiation flowing and how do we continue to provide value to our customers? Well, you know, I think the key is to open contactless, touchless digital communication, right? Uh, 
Uh, if you can't come on site, how are you going to see the vehicle, the truck repairs, and to manage workflow? It needs to start with a digital image capture and educating the workforce on how to estimate from images. It's also about creating unique opportunities and requirements for remote uh, working. You know, it's, it's around the vehicle appraisal, right? End of lease, uh, car rental returns, you know, it's every aspect of the industry, uh, not just the collision side that uh, has to look at different ways of uh, doing business. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. It's everyone involved in the industry. And David, what have you been seeing in terms of claims initiation on your side? Well, um, good question. Um, really, our customers now more than ever need to be fully connected uh, to their networks on an end-to-end -end solution, not just the estimating, uh, not just the parts procurement or, or invoicing. It's everything down the line um, throughout the claim. And, you know, if they're moving on and offline, then what happens is you start disrupting your workflow. And when you disrupt your workflow, you start breaking down communication uh, between all of the players throughout the industry and everyone involved in that line. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, I think really automation, uh, digital self-serve at the FNOL, um, these are critical. And, you know, sharing the data to connect to the supply chain and uh, with information to initiate the claim, to allocate, to order parts, inform the customer and everything else down the line there as well. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring something like that to life in today's day and age? Well, I think the first step is uh, digital, right? Uh, or sorry, um, um, we're, we're still trying to solve two different problems, right? The way damage solutions are understood and utilized throughout the claims journey and addressing the accuracy and speed of the estimate to solve tomorrow's problem with technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, to, to, um, uh, to Michelle's point, you know, it's the first step is digital um, and it's to be powered by a unified data platform. Um, you know, it continues from the images at the front, um, and then you decide based on the data. Um, you know, we want to focus on facts and not judgment. Uh, you know, image capture that ensures that the customer needs no training, um, no download, just a super easy experience. And that's, that's the key. You know, without this, then we'll never have the pre-estimate. Um, within minutes, the estimator or a claims handler could make data-driven decisions, uh, mm -hmm. which is why we have enhanced, you know, um, our, our estimating system tool today with Captor. You know, um, what we've done is we've kept that same comprehensive inside-out methodology, the vehicle-specific option-driven, um, you know, and the accurate calculation engine. It, these things are critical. Um, by limiting supplements and making sure that we get that estimate right the very first time. And when we're talking about things like that inside out methodology, then we're looking at, so I always like to use the example of a headlight, for example. It's very easy, um, seems as far as the time goes for taking out a headlight, it's like 0.5 or 0.3 or whatever it might be. But what that's missing is I have to take the bumper off first in order to get to that in order to take to accommodate for that 0.3. So really it's more like a you know 2.5 or a 3.5 um, time. So we'd be missing out on things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what, I, I think, uh, I, I just wanna interject there for a second. You know, if you look back 40 years ago when our database was being created, um, you know, with uh, the inside out vehicle specific option driven database and how relevant it is today to address two main issues the aging workforce, right? We, we know uh, we're struggling in the industry, you know, to have uh, uh, very capable uh, new staff coming in. Uh, and then secondly is the photo to estimate, you know, the machine learning, the VI, without understanding the full components behind the scenes and how our automation kicks in, you know, we wouldn't be able to get to that next generation of visual intelligence or photo to estimate uh, visual intelligence that's coming, uh, that's planned for launch later this year. So we're mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, yeah, absolutely. Like, it sounds like a very exciting tool, and I'm, I'm eager to get a closer look at it. <clears throat> so do we want to dive into a demonstration of Captor right now? Is that what we want to do? Yeah, you know what, I think, I think it's a good point. You know, the fact is, is this new Captor, um, you know what, you're not required uh, to be uh, restricted to Internet Explorer. 
right? It is a tablet friendly application, right? So if you look at the, some of the features that David's gonna go through there today, this is our second generation cloud-based estimating, right? We, we launched the first one back in 2005, right? And uh, now you have the, the new speed style work list, the drag and drop photo upload, right? And David will show a little bit of that earlier. And I can't emphasize once again, you know, the tablet friendly, you can actually get into the estimate very easily. So why don't we jump right over so David can show you a little bit of captor estimating and, uh, you know, I hope you guys uh, enjoy what you see. Yeah, so I'll just pass it over to you, David. We can launch into this, uh, this uh, demonstration here of captor. Okay, perfect. So let me just uh, try and share my screen. And just let me know when you can see it. We got it up here. I'll turn Fantastic. my camera off to give everyone a good luck here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So um, the first thing that we can see on the screen there is that uh, our URL is the same. So it's auditexsolutions.com. And that's the same one that we've been using uh, for years uh, for Auditex uh, estimating. Now we're looking at Captor we're still gonna utilize that autotechsolutions.com. We don't have to remember the new site or anything like that. The other thing that uh, is important to, re to notice is that I'm using my same ID as well. So when I'm using my same user ID, the same URL, the same password, I don't have to remember all of these things, another one, because we all have so many usernames and passwords and things that we have to remember already. Um, let's keep it the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, log in here. Um, so we can see that as we load in, we're going to get directly to the work list, very similar to what we're used to seeing in the past as well. Um, only this time, we're seeing a much cleaner interface, a much more modern, cleaner interface. Okay. Um, very similar to what we saw before. We've got that uh, newsfeed style work list. And what we've done is we've color coded and bolded and made things a lot easier to pop. So it's easy for us to identify things um, such as the estimate status. The side is a lot cleaner now. I have this help center and this help center, it's, it's really neat. Uh, I'm really excited about this as well. So if you have questions and you are on this particular page, this is page specific dynamic. So when whatever page you're on, you can go ahead and click on Help Center and it's gonna give you uh, some information on anything that's on that particular page that you, wanna, that you need information on. And it is also guided and interactive. So that will help you out a lot. If you have any questions, uh, no more having to think about it and ask somebody and then go somewhere else and then end up calling support because you can't remember uh, where things are and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on a claim here and we'll get started and have a quick look at an estimate. So as I come into this estimate, uh, similar to what we're used to seeing with Autotex estimating, in Captor, you're gonna land on the admin page. This very first page is the quick admin page, gives you all your pertinent information for that particular claim right now. Um, if you wanna get for further information on your contacts or enter more information on contacts, um, your more detailed inspection information, you can go there as well. So I'm gonna move along to the vehicle page. Once we get to that vehicle page, we're gonna see uh, a couple of things. So the very first thing obviously is our VIN number. Um, I, you can see I have the AutoVIN information received. So that means that I've been able to identify some things with AutoVIN. The other neat thing that we have here, and so let's say you are using your tablet, um, we have a scan VIN button. So you can go ahead and click on that and scan the VIN. I don't know how many times uh, anyone out there has gone out, written down the VIN number, you've come back in, you've gotten all your information from, your from the vehicle, started writing your estimate, and you can't even read your own writing or the picture that you took of the VIN number, you can't, you can't uh, see very clearly. Scan the VIN. Um, that way it's accurate. You don't have to go back out, run back out in the cold again. Um, so as I move along here, we can see that there's a few things that are green there, and those are the ones that were identified by Audivin. So that's really great. And we've also had the color 
as well as the uh, two-stage or three-stage refinish uh, identified for us. As we move along the top, again, we talked about having a vehicle-specific option-driven database. So the options are so important with us. When I go into, say, our optional equipment, we can see that Audivin identified these ones. They're bolded. Those are the ones that Audivin identified for us as well. Moving along the top, we have our recalls and our frame dimensions, uh, just like we had before as well. So we're going to keep going on. We're going down our work list, just like we our typical flow, the way we were used to working. And we're going to move to the point of impact. Um, I've selected here the right rear corner uh, as the primary impact point. And what that does for us is it defaults the side, so we're not making mistakes. And I don't know how many times I've, I've put on an estimate to fix the left door, but I'm trying to fix the right door. Um, so we're gonna default that for you right away. And the other neat thing is, is that when I get to that damage page, I'm gonna get to the graphics that start on the rear. And that is so, it's, it just makes life a lot easier. So I can start where the damage is and I don't have to go surfing around um, trying to get to where I need to be, I'm already there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that bumper cover. What we're used to seeing in Auditex estimating is we have a pop-up of the operations and that gives us all of the selections that we wanna do, but then we have a second pop-up and that second pop-up would say, hey, uh, do you are you looking for a recycled bumper or are you looking to, um, to do an overhaul on that particular bumper? Well, we're giving you all of that in the part slide out right here. So I don't have to hunt for it. I'm not missing any pop-ups or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and select on the recycled bumper assembly. When I select on there, we can see here it is. So we'll click on there. We'll put in the price of the bumper, put in that markup for us, go ahead and save and close. And we've got it done. So nice and simple, super easy and a lot faster in my opinion. So we can see, I can click on damage list. We've got our quick view of the damages that we've just added in there. And what we can see here is we're just kind of giving you more real estate. Again, thinking about your usage, if you're using it with a tablet, it's gonna make life a lot easier for you to give you more real estate to play with these, uh, with these parts. We kept some of our, our uh, things that were very popular, like the quick navigation. So if I wanted to quickly get to that front door, I just click on there. I'm going to click on the door, for example. Let's say I want to get it painted. So I'm going to paint that door, refinish. And one of the things that I really like that we've done here, and I'm just going to zoom into the, oops. Don't hold your control button, just zoom in. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see things a little bit better uh, with those 3D graphics. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this fast capture. Fast capture is really cool because what we can do is we're gonna say, all right, I'm on that right side. I wanna do the RNIs because I got a bunch of things that I want on RNI. So I'm going to RNI the mirror. I'm gonna RNI the door handle. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to RNI the door handle there. I'm going to RNI the belt molding. And we've got those done nice and quick and easy. So we can see here, I'm just going to go to the damage list and we can see everything here. So if our list gets super long, we can see what I've done here. I've done the door, I've RNI those parts nice and easy, really quick to get to and nice and easy to do. So really liking what we've done there. We've got a, a neat search function there that makes life a lot easier. So for example, if I wanted to see some clips. David, it looks like you're still zoomed in on your uh, Chrome. Oh, am I? Okay. Yeah. How's there that? Perfect. Okay, cool. Thank you, sir. So if I wanted to look for some clips, I could do that. Just start typing in clips. And we can see that all of the clips that uh, come up on there. But the other neat thing is, uh, what I really like is, uh, you know, I've had body men come in with broken pieces and they, uh, I'm trying to look at the part number <laughs> and I've got part of a part number. Well, what I can do is I can actually just type in the 
part of that part number. And no matter where it shows up, this these uh, digits show up in the part number list, it's going to come up in this list for me. So uh, no more trying to identify what the heck is this part. I can type in partial part numbers, or I can type in partial names, and I'll be able to uh, get those parts for us nice and easy. Now, we can add photos directly from the damage page, but I am just because this is our workflow, I'm just gonna go down to the attachments button just so you can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on and add a, a few photos for us. And we'll load those guys in. All right, so um, very similar to what we've seen before, but what I really like here is that we have a film strip ability so I can scroll through those photos that I've added here already. Um, if I'm looking at a particular photo, um, you know, black cars are very hard to see damages on. So what I can do is I can enhance that vision, do the invert so I can see damages better. So once I've seen that, I can say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to need to mark that thing up. This is something that um, we've heard from our customers that why can't I mark up those photos? Well, you know, with Auditex estimating, if you actually mark up an original photo, it's no longer admissible in the court of law. So that's no good. So what we've done is we've given you the ability to mark up photos. Uh, we can put in words, we can circle it. There's my damages. And what it does is it actually gives us a second copy. So now we have our original copy of that photo and we've got a second copy that has the markups. Of course, we still have the annotations and annotations obviously are super important, especially when we're doing that bilateral communication with the image desk, for example. Now I can say, uh, please invert to see damages and that way, the image desk gentleman, uh, person that, uh, can look at this and say, hey, um, I can't see that damage. Oh, I need to invert it and I'll be able to see those damages a lot better. Okay. So we're really excited with, uh, with what we're able to do here as well. And again, this isn't just for photos. We can um, scan in invoices. We can attach any other type of document in here as well. So you can see here that I've got zero documents at this time, but I can add them in. Uh, uh, just like I was able to do in Auditex estimating. You know, um, going into reports, reports are exactly the same. So we don't have to relearn how to read reports. Those reports are exactly the same that you've done before. So um, we're just going to go to close. Once we get to the close dialog, we're going to see a lot of the same things that we saw in the past as well. We've got our maintain current status. And in this particular case, I'll need to send mine to the review team for them to review it, look at my photos, and uh, approve it. So in this case, I'm just going to maintain current status. So it's just a quick little run through and give you a, an example just to sort of see uh, what we're looking at with uh, this, with uh, captor estimating. I really like what we're seeing here. And, you know, not only have we modernized the, the interface, uh, we've made it nice and easy. And you can tell uh, all of the buttons are a little bit bigger. So when I'm using my tablet, I can easily touch them without hitting the wrong uh, section. Um, but all of those things are fantastic. But what this also does is it sets the stage um, for a variety of the new features that we have coming up very shortly. And that we're really excited about, you know, things like um, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. So those things are coming very soon. And we have Captor as a base in order to get us there. Yeah, David, if you can just touch base on the actions that you can take place from the work list here too. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cause, because yeah. we're missing some of those things that we saw down the side in the past. So I can right, go right to the actions, hit, hit that hamburger menu. I can go directly to the admin. I can go to damages. I can see my reports right from here. I can print it off, email it to my customers from here, uh, export it. Um, all of those things nice and quick and easy for us to get to on that particular report, I can even go directly to the comments and shoot off a comment uh, to the insurance partner or vice versa. If you're an insurance partner, you can send it off to your, um, uh, to your shop. 
Uh, I see that there, I see that there's a question around attaching the photos. Yes, you can drag and drop them um, mm -hmm. into the new we've application. Got an, we've got another question here, um, actually from the same person, Corey Carla. He was just asking if it was single or double clicking you were doing there, Dave. On which part? Um, I think it was the first part that you were on there. I think it was damage selection. Yeah, damage selection. Oh, so yeah, if you want to add something nice and quickly, um, when I was in the quick add type thing, um, then you would double click. Mm -hmm. um, a single click because uh, a single click would give you the ability to get to that part and then have your options. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, if you double click it, it'll, it'll default and automatically add them up. Okay, cool. Very and there was question. another Another question here from uh, Bill McGowan. He said, is there still a number of li a limit to the number of photos or attachments that you're adding? Uh, at this time, there is a, a, a photo number limit similar to what we're looking at. Um, again, what we've done is we sort of kept that same engine um, for now. And you know, we identify that there are some challenges uh, with um, adding all of these, <laughs> the number of photos. Uh, so we are working on that uh, for the future as well. Gotcha. Uh, one more question before we uh, save the rest of the questions for our um, Q&A period. But uh, Tom McGougall wants to know, will this platform also include in part search as Auditex does? Um, we have the APU search, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, yes, APU, nice and easy. And in fact, uh, I can get back to that so you can see. It's really easy. It's right up front uh, on the damage page. You go ahead and select APU search. Everything happens within 30 seconds. Awesome. Well, incredible. Yeah, it looks like a very exciting tool. Um, David, if we're done with the demonstration there, once we're done, you can just toss me back over the hosting further so we can get back up to the uh, PowerPoint. Absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to let them see that here's oh, the APU search. And as well, we've got the estimate check there as well. Okay. Very comprehensive. Yeah. All right, so let me see how I can get this back to you. Just hover over my collision repair name and you should get that. Stop share. And is that all I have to do? <laughs> if, you go, uh, if you go to participants and then hover over my name and the more there button, just uh, make me the host. Perfect. <laughs> all right, we're all set then. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that demonstration there. Uh, oh, I think Melissa is actually the host now. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> so Melissa, I'm going to need you to toss it back over to me if you don't Sorry mind. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, so we'll just continue on with the questions though for now. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so thank you so much for that demo there. I hope everyone enjoyed the demonstration of Captor. It's definitely looking like an exciting solution and an opportunity that collision centers will definitely want to take advantage of. Uh, yeah, we're uh, definitely, you know, we're overly excited about it and how Captor can help our clients achieve their streamlined uh, uh, goals, right? Captor Estimating offers the most robust enhancement catalog for repair facilities that wants more than just an estimating system. Every add-on is seamlessly integrated, um, you know, from digital imaging, from the drag and drop, as we uh, demonstrated earlier, to insurance compliance and even shop forgettables compliance tools, right? Parts locating in depth, uh, uh, VIN decode, such as the auto VIN that we uh, demonstrated there earlier, uh, as well as the 3D graphics. You know, originally when we brought 3D graphics out, um, people thought that was more of a gamification, but it's so much more than that, right? With the complexity of the substrate identification, you know, it identifies what kind of uh, material, uh, whether or not you're going to go to a, a replace or repair uh, procedure. Uh, and plus, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but in that demo, as he was entering the parts into the estimate, they turned the auto orange, right? So the orange color shows that it's already in the estimate. So from a forgettable standpoint, um, you know, it has a lot more functionality within the application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big transformation. Um, but I mean, with a big transformation, a big question comes with uh, how long does it take for shops to transition from, say, auto text estimating oh. to counter? Yeah, this is a good thing, right? We, we really uh, did a lot of thought uh, into the change management. Um, you know, so upgrading to captor estimating will be, uh, in my mind, uh, simple and easy. And our team is there to dedicate, uh, dedicate it to support you guys through the transition, right? So how-to videos, robust customer support, comprehensive live and uh, on-demand training will be available as well in our uh, My Support Garage. 
Um, more importantly, we did, like I said, uh, we addressed the change management. So unlike our migration back in 2005, which, uh, you know, I know a lot of the shops that are on the, on the webinar here today went through that, right? And at that stage, you had to go, you had to run both systems, right? Depending on whether or not the insurer was on ShopLink, PhotoLink, uh, versus that of Autotex estimating. Well, this new migration, we've addressed that with a sync functionality. So regardless to what system the insurer may have uh, be on, uh, you'll be working from one single work list, no different than what David was showing there. And then behind the scenes, as you click into the application, it'll steer you to the appropriate system automatically. So we've, we've addressed change management. Uh, it will be very seamless. Amazing, well, it's great to hear, I mean, a big, Big, uh, big problem when you're transitioning software like that, I know, can be like a whole taking a whole day off to train. And I mean, knowing that you won't have to do that, that's a huge bonus. Absolutely. So what has the reception been from clients that have been using Captix? I know there's a couple out there that have been lucky enough to get their hands on it early. <laughs> so what have they been saying about the platform? What's What are the public saying? You know, it, it's been really good, actually. Um, I'm super happy with it. The feedback uh, has been... Um, Unreal. Really, what there's, what we're hearing is uh, that the UI has been really good. Um, basically, saying there's a gentleman Lucas who said that he really liked the look and feel um, of how you know how clean and easy it is, um, and they're also finding that the navigation is easy. And that's also so critical, right? When we're getting into a new software, we wanna be able to do things nice and easy, find things quickly and go through that process and our workflows super easy. And so there's a gentleman, June in, in BC and he had mentioned to us, he says he really felt that the workflow um, of writing it was really smooth. Awesome, well, glad to hear that you guys got some positive uh, feedback so far, but when is Captor being rolled out to everyone? When can everyone else try it? <laughs> uh, really good question. Um, you know, it's it's funny because Canada is so great uh, with technology. Um, there are a lot of other countries where there's a lot of pushback. Oh, I don't want to change and I don't want, to, you know, this is what I know. In Canada, um, everybody wants it and everybody wants it now. Uh, and so that's really exciting. Uh, what we've had to do because of this huge demand and, and uh, excitement is we've had to stagger that rollout. And so what we're doing first is um, there's a number of uh, non-DRP shops that we're rolling out across the country. And we're doing that in phases. Um, and then, of course, uh, we're going to be doing uh, the rest uh, as well along in those staggered sort of phase way to make it nice and easy transition for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. We just launched a poll asking if uh, people would be excited to try to look after upon launch. We've got a whopping 60% saying yes. So you guys <laughs> definitely got a good product here. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. So it's great to hear that uh, you're going to get that staggered rollout going. Um, as a global company, though, you guys are huge. What have you been working on in the last uh, two years or so? Well, uh, be, be, yeah, before we get to that, like... Oh, uh, sorry. I skipped a question. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, you did script. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll let you go back to the question. Uh. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> sorry to the audience there. I got a little ahead of myself getting too excited about Captor here. But um, how does it work about with uh, transitioning Autodex estimating to Captor? Are they comp compatible? Oh, that's the great thing, right? So Captor is completely compatible with Autotex estimating, meaning that uh, if a new estimate was written under Autotex estimating, you can write a supplement in Captor. Uh, and in fact, all your files from Autotex estimating will automatically be ported over to Captor, making it super easy for the estimator and the staff to quickly get up to, uh, uh, to pick up in Captor wherever they left off in the Autotex estimating system. So, uh, we, like I said, we did a lot of thought in the change management aspect of this to make sure that it says there's the least amount of disruption within any organization while they're going through this migration. Yeah, I, I think it's also important to know that, you know, that there's no setup really involved. If you're just doing a migration, you don't have to add in your rates for all of your profiles. You don't have to add in all of uh, all of these things that you had already set up in in Autotex estimating, because that takes a long time. All of that stuff carries over as well. So it just makes life so much easier. Yeah, super seamless, super compatible. I mean, like we said before, easy to set up. I mean, why wouldn't you be interested? <laughs>
Uh, but moving on to um, what I was getting ahead of myself with, but uh, global globally, Solera, you guys are huge. So we're just interested to know what have you guys been working on in the last two years? Obviously last year was kind of crazy, but what's sort of the focus right now for Solera globally? Well, I think there's a consolidation that we have from a global perspective. You know, we used to have North America, you know, doing their own bit and then uh, Europe and other places around the world during their, do, during their own thing. Um, right now, that consolidation has really brought uh, some products and uh, things to the market a lot quicker. All right. So if I look over the last two years, you know, from a data perspective, you know, the data infrastructure uh, uh, is a key focus. Um, uh, we pride the fact that we're pretty quick uh, in terms of new models uh, and new vehicles coming into our database. Uh, and that will continue to get accelerated as more more and more European vehicles continue to uh, uh, come into North America. Uh, secondly, you know, as a result of this data infrastructure, you know, we've been able to release audit target in Canada, as well as image capture, right? And this continues to expand many places around the globe, South Africa, South America, Australia, to name a few. And then last, you know, uh, later this year, we're really excited to bring photo to estimate uh, artificial intelligence uh, into the capture application. And Captor really is the foundation for us to get to that next level. Uh, so, you know, the timing of uh, everything is, you know, uh, it, you know, there's, there's a method behind our madness, right? And, uh, you know, I like to say it's a controlled uh, rollout, and it is. Um, and that's really what's been going on for the last several years. I wouldn't even say just the last two years. Amazing. Yeah, I've got a lot up your sleeve so far. And I mean, that AI, that's got to be interesting. Excited to see that. Uh, it's, a, it's a game changer. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. So we're getting close to the Q&A, everyone. We've already got lots of questions lined up here in the Q&A. But if you have a pressing question for Dave and Michelle, we're going to spend about 20 minutes answering them. Just my last question before we head into um, the Q&A. Uh, obviously, we're in a crazy time right now. Um, if there's one thing that body shops should do today to get ready to accept the latest technology, what would you two say it is? Well, I'm going to say that, you know, the first thing is obviously take pictures, um, you know, but test new ways, right? But the, the key here is to be digital first. Don't always go off site. Um, like how else can you connect with your customers online in, in these age, in these days, right? So um, digitalize the experience to make better decisions and move from judgment to data-driven decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and if I look at it, even from the insurer, uh, insurer side, really, it starts with the triage right at the FNOL, uh, try and understand, uh, you know, what we do is we typically sit down with our clients to understand the workflows to see where we can augment our AI and machine learning, right, to streamline any workflows. Uh, the improved customer journey is not no touch, but it's touchless, right? The future will bring faster approvals, earlier parts ordering, reduced key to keys, smarter repair allocations and faster settlements, right? Um, we understand that it's not gonna be an easy transition, but we do have the tools uh, now to work with our partners at a pace that's uh, suitable for their business. And you know, if anything, COVID, uh, you know, it did, uh, I heard a quote uh, on a different uh, webinar that I was on that, you know, COVID did not create innovation, it accelerated it. And I think that's a very, very uh, uh, key point because, uh, you know, uh, prior to COVID, you know, even the image capture component with uh, some of our insurance partners, uh, it was planned to be a pilot, right? COVID hit and boy, did that change. And it was like, no, we're not piloting this. This is full rollout. And you know what? We've been able to get, uh, uh, you know, our partners up in a matter of days, you know, around the image capture. So that way they can continue the claims process, right? So, you know, when we look at the, you know, we need to train people, systems and processes to be able to handle the fully digital customer con contactless experience, right? Businesses that are leading the way now will be the brands of the future, right? As indicated before, you see a lot of uh, things on LinkedIn around various, uh, you know, independent shops, MSOs, Everybody's doing their part to try and recreate uh, the way that they're communicating with their customers and getting the business, right? We're dealing with, uh, uh, you know, crazy times right now. Uh, volumes are not the way they used to be. So how are you going to get those customers in your door? Uh, because, you know, miles driven 
You know, when you look at Quebec in lockdown again, uh, Ontario's not looking good right now. Um, that all affects the miles driven, which obviously affects the number of claims that are taking place, right? So how are you getting the business or how are you recreating your business to get the business? I guess that's the best way I'm looking at it, right? So beyond COVID-19 represents opportunities uh, for those that are willing and able to take it, right? Uh, as indicated before, you know, you're, it's forced revolution where we need to do more, right? Do it faster and take the business to the next level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I completely agree there. And like we said at the beginning of the webinar, it's been fantastic to see all of Canada come together, the collision community. So bravo to all you guys out there for weathering it through this storm we've been experiencing. You've done a fantastic job and we'll continue to weather on in the new, in the new year that we're in right now. So that concludes um, all of the interview portion that we had. So thank you both, uh, Michelle and David, for that thoughtful insight on CAPTER, the demonstration, and everything that you told us about this last uh, 40 minutes. <clears throat> We're going to now launch into a QA. and a We've got, oops, sorry, dropping things over here. Uh, we've got some questions coming in from our viewers. So let's get, let's just get started. We've got some questions to cap, about CAPTER here. First off, someone's asking how you search for an estimate. This would be a question for you, David, I guess. Is it still alphabetical where you have to kind of guess where, what page number you'd be going to or how are they organized? So the, the work list is similar to the way that we had it with uh, Autotex estimating, whereby you have your, uh, your columns and you can sort your columns um, any way that you want. So just by s simply selecting on, on the column that you're looking at. So if you're looking at owner name, you can uh, sort it that way or sort it by estimate status. But we also have the uh, search feature, which is right on the main page now, as, as opposed to being into a, a separate uh, page. So now you can just go ahead and click on search and just type in what you're looking for. So it's going to make things a little bit faster and easier for you to find there as well. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers your question there. Uh, we've got a question here for Michelle as well. Someone wants to know if Captor Heavy Truck is going to be available anytime soon. Uh, yes, that you know what that uh, that application is still in the testing stages. Uh, as you can understand, there's so much more complexities when you're talking with uh, heavy trucks. Um, you know, there's a lot more testing. We were hoping to get that out a little earlier. Uh, but you know what, uh, it has been uh, challenging, but we continue to go through the testing stages. So until we feel comfortable internally that it's a viable product for our customers to get value from it, at, at that time, then we'll have that launched. Awesome, well, well, great to hear it. Um, another question for David, this one's from Sharon Ashley. Uh, they wanna know how, where and how do you set up export settings? Do you support EMS and BMS? So the export settings, um, very similarly, so we have, a, you go into preferences and you literally just put in um, where you want these files to go to, just like you did before you had a folder that you have on your computer and you just simply point um, that uh, the export files uh, to that particular folder. And at this time, we're still continuing on with the 2.01 as well as the 2.6. So we have the two uh, versions that uh, that Sika supports right now. Um, and so those are the ones that we have currently. Yeah. The other good thing, though, that we have done is we've added one extra uh, path because we were we found that people were running out of paths to use. So <laughs> we've added mm -hmm. one more of those. Yeah, and just another comment around the change management, you know, with my support garage. So what we'll be doing is inviting uh, shops to, uh, you know, sign up for the training. Um, it will be an online training to start off. And as indicated earlier, we will have live uh, on-demand sessions as well uh, for those that do not want to work at their own pace. But realistically, somebody who's very capable with audit text estimating today should very easily be able like. I'm not even an estimator and I was able to go through the qualifications fairly simply, um, you know, uh, inside an hour, right? And, uh, and a lot of that is, you know, back to Ashley's question around how do you set up the export paths, different stuff like that, that is in that training as well, uh, right? And, the, and really the majority of the training is up front of the setup, you know, make sure that everything's right. But as indicated by David, a lot of that is being transferred over. So that way there is no real, uh, reset up that has to take place unless you do have to change the paths for your export uh, then that gets updated appropriately and you know how to do it so uh, 
Uh, you can do it on your own time. You're not locked in to do it between two, three or during work hours. Uh, you can do it in modules. I believe there's 10 modules to it, uh, if memory serves me correct. And uh, uh, you can do it on your own time after hours. You know, once again, very little business disruption. Yeah, and I think the key point there, Michelle, is that it's modular. And that way, you know, you don't have to sit down and do uh, all of them at once. You can say, hey, you know what, I, I have uh, a few minutes, I can knock out a couple of these modules right now. And, you know, uh, five o'clock, I can go ahead and, and uh, do a couple more if I wanted to. So uh, you don't, you're not bound by sitting there, I got to start this thing and I got to get all the way through it. You can do it at your own pace. And that's, that's the beautiful part about that. And if you're not that kind of person um, that learns through just doing certification uh, interaction type things and needs to talk to somebody or needs to have that instruction, then as Michelle mentioned as well, we've got that live uh, webinars, a uh, live instructional training uh, on the My Support Garage as well. Yeah, and I just see a quick question for myself and uh, around our shops to contact us to get migrated over or are we going to be reaching out? Uh, we will be reaching out uh, based on the rollout plans that we have internally. Um, um, so that, 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 that's the plan of attack on that side. Gotcha. Uh, another question from Dana Alexander, perhaps it's along the lines, or maybe you don't have that roll of details available yet, but they want to know when the product will be available in the Maritimes around. Okay, uh, well, yeah, yeah, go I'll ahead. let David. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we mentioned, it is sort of a staggered rollout. So depending on, you know, whether you've got um, insurance partners or not, um, is going to dis depend on when you're actually going to see it as well. So we're going to see that, you know, in the next couple of weeks, actually, that um, in the Maritimes for the non-DRP, you'll start getting the ability to give it a shot. Um, we have a, the tri-captor tri option, uh, so you can flip a switch and uh, flip back and forth. So if you're not comfortable yet, if you haven't completed all of your training yet, um, then you can sort of flip back and forth with that. If you have partners, then of course, we need to align with your insurance partners as well. And then um, once we have that alignment, then we'll be rolling out with, uh, with our insurance partners. Okay, makes sense. So uh, another question from uh, the same um, Bill, Mc, Bill McGowan wants to know, um, back to the attachment question that he was asking previously, there was a limit on the size of attachments before that made it a challenge to uh, attach scanned PDFs sometimes. That's what they were asking. So they were just wondering if that limit on scanned PDFs had been increased, I suppose. Uh, let me validate that. I don't want to give you the wrong answer, but I'll definitely make sure that I write that down and just make sure that um, I have the correct answer for you, Bill. And um, we'll make sure that you have the answer for that. So Bill awesome. McGowan. Yep. All righty. Um, another question here from Doug Corral wants to know if he has to re-enter all his pre-stored entries for each profile when switching over to Captor. Uh, that's the beautiful thing. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. We're going to carry those things over for you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Got another question here. Um, oops, sorry. I got so many questions coming in here. All right. So when emailing an estimate out, attaching pictures, um, does Captor use the user's email program and does it show up in your sent files when you send out that message? So... Um, Right now, you, if you go to say, for example, in your work list and you want to email that off, you go ahead and click on the button and we'll actually utilize our own and um, our own sort of system and send it off for you. Awesome, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, and another question here from Corey Carla. Have you updated the system so we can copy and paste part numbers? Copy and paste part numbers. That's a good question. It's not coming directly to my brain right now. Yeah. So that's coming on my list. And I'm sorry, who was that? Uh, Corey Carla. Corey. Okay, Corey. Um, I'll I get will you that make answer. note of that. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, so someone else says, he says, thank you. Corey's uh, grateful for the uh, response there. No problem. 
Something that I'm just curious about question wise, I mean, we mentioned a little bit, Michelle, there at the end, um, first notice of loss and uh, the digitization of the process. I'm kind of interested to know, um, are we seeing a standardization of the technological FNL, FNLO process, FNOL process? Or is that more in the UK and stuff we're seeing? That? No, I think that, uh, you know what, uh, each insurer is doing their own thing uh, right now. There is no standardization. You know, uh, case in point, I just joined another uh, insurer uh, for my automotive. And now I do have an app where I can report a claim that way. Uh, I have not had the opportunity to report a claim to see exactly everything that it does. But if I look at some of our insurance partners, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, um, you know, uh, the FNOL side of things. So workflow today, we have some insurers that, uh, you know, customer calls in, you know, to start the claim itself. They take a few uh, triage questions. Uh, they have the ability now to send off, uh, you know, a web link over to them to uh, capture the images uh, even before it gets to a shop, Right. Where I see that eventually going, uh, and we do have insurers uh, that are utilizing that already, where it now creates a preliminary estimate from the images automatically. It comes back. Now the insured has the ability to choose a selected uh, you know, repair facility based on that type of vehicle that is being repaired. So let's just say it's a Toyota Corolla, and let's just say it's XYZ shop that's very good at Toyota Corollas. Uh, it can make recommendations to try and get it in there. And then eventually, you know, there's the scheduling of getting it in for an estimate or even those repairs. So if you look at it, the utopia is to have a digitized FNOL from cradle to grave, regardless to whether or not it's a repairable or settlement of a total loss. And that is happening in some places. It's just, you know, some are working quicker than others, um, but eventually it's, you know, how do, how do you do it as dis, uh, uh, with the least disruption as possible to your customer, right? Because everybody's fighting for various uh, real estate on the phone, right, from apps. But if the apps don't give the value uh, or additional value to a customer to have it on there, they'll use it once and throw it out, right? So how do you deal with that? And, you know, I, I feel web applications are probably the best way dealing with the links that way, because there's no downloading of uh, any applications. It's strictly you click on the link and it takes you to the next stage of the process from there. Yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I've just been seeing so much uh, on the UK side and things like that, but here it's more insurer based. Um, we've got another question here. This is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, they say this may be in the early days to ask. However, can you comment on integration opportunities, i.e. APIs for Claim Center or any other claim management uh, system? That's a very, very good question. I know uh, we, we, have the, we have the philosophy, especially with the latest uh, technology of API first, right? So we, we put it in the frame, uh, 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 in the mindset of, you know, what APIs make it much easier to integrate. Uh, and if we have to create those internally, they're made available for external sources to have integrations. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, various insurers today, you know, uh, some are moving to Guidewire or maybe on Guidewire. We already have uh, the APIs uh, to connect onto those. So, you know, there, there's different, uh, you know, integration components as to where those go. Uh, you know, uh, I can't speak uh, as to where the limitations are, um, but, you know, it's becoming more and more seamless. Yeah, we've seen it seamless throughout um the process. So I, we don't see any challenges with that at all. Hmm. Okay, we've got a great question here. This is for David. I know that we've been eager to touch on this question. This is from Vaughn Murphy. He says, is the application supported in any browser? Ah, wonderful question. <laughs> Actually, so, you know, um, back when we built this thing, uh, 2005, as Michelle uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you know, 90% of all users were using in on the internet were using Internet Explorer. Uh, I think there were only really two browsers at the time, anyway. Um, so what you do is you obviously you're going to build towards uh, what a first comes with uh, Windows, uh, so that everybody already has it, um, and then of course. Um, you know, when you're looking at the numbers of 90%, you're, that's why we built it on that particular platform. Fast forward to today, we're looking at uh, a 60% usage of Chrome 
uh, for it. So what we've had to do and what we've done here is we've been able to modernize this with the UI and all of that kind of fun stuff, but now you can use multiple browsers. So whether you want to use Chrome or Edge, or if you're still happy with Internet Explorer, you go ahead and use that still as well, because uh, we can use multiple browsers. And what that also allows us to do is say, okay, let me grab my tablet. And on my tablet, I can have my Chrome or my Edge um, on there as well and go out to the stand by the car, write my estimates with my tablet. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a big step up. I mean, like we were saying yeah. before in our test runs, you don't have to walk back inside and outside and you're saving so much time. It's just about the little things. Absolutely. <laughs> So uh, we've got a couple more minutes here. Hopefully we'll get through our last couple of questions, but we've got another one here from uh, Fred North, just asking if we'll be able to export the estimate to our management system without having to close the estimate in Captor like they did in Auditex estimating. Um, it, it, yes, I mean, if you're talking about, if you need to do it from the work list, for example, um, you can easily go ahead and just click on that little actions thing that we showed you earlier and right from there you can export it right from there from the work list um yes yeah, so if that's what the question is and i apologize if that's <laughs> uh, if i didn't get it right but i think that's what the question was yep absolutely okay perfect so how do we update our auto text estimation system to this new version of captor we've got a couple questions here so i think we've already mentioned the staggered rollout but maybe we could just talk about that again sorry can you restate the question again yeah, the person just wants to know how they update their Autotex estimation system to this new version of Captor. Oh, okay. Yeah, very simple. So once um, we're, we're, you are in that group of that rollout, um, you've probably received some emails already saying, hey, you know what, it's coming and, um, you know, get trained, get on the, on the My Support Garage and get trained. Um, then you, you'll get some emails uh, from us as well saying, hey, you know, this is the day it's going to come on. Um, so we literally flip the switch. And once we flip that switch, um, then you come into work the next morning and you've got captured. So it's really yeah, and, and and just for clarification, us flicking that switch. Obviously, we're getting reports back that you've taken all the uh, online training, different stuff like that, that you're qualified to do it. Uh, we're just not going to flip it over uh, without you guys uh, or without the recipient action doing doing their due diligence beforehand. As indicated, it's a self-paced side of things, so we're not forcing you that hey, you're going to get the email Friday and you got to be up and running for Monday. Uh, that's not the intent, but, you know, it's really to alleviate our, you know, our, our tech support side of things uh, to make sure that you, you have the basics to navigate, right? Because you get used to seeing certain things as Dave was showing today, you know, you're used to seeing it on the far left. Next thing you know, it's the upper right uh, and there's pop out, uh, you know, screens or action items that take place on the single screen. So there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. We tried to make it as simple as possible. And we, you know, we spent a lot of time with, uh, you know, third party companies just trying to understand the best way to design it, mm -hmm. right? Based on uh, whether or not you're using it from a, you know, a, ta uh, uh, you know, a desktop versus a laptop versus uh, a tablet, right? So we, uh, a lot of time and effort was put in on that side. So I don't see the learning curve being all that drastic. <clears throat> Um, Bill McGowan wants to know if there's a link available to share for on the online training for Captor yet, or if there's any sort of information out there. Yes, uh, just go to mysupportgarage.com. Once you get there, you log in with your Auditex estimating ID. So, uh, you know, in, in the old days when we had the uh, online training center, you had a separate user ID that you had to remember and the password. And um, even I didn't remember my own. So um, the beauty about this is that if when you go to my support garage, just log in with the ID that you're used to using for Auditex, that's going to get you in. Um, and that's going to identify you as well, that you are an appraiser, and you can go in there and get the training there as well. And yeah, also, and Bill, so, yeah, yeah, so sorry. sorry. You know, I was just about to say, uh, you can you can click on the link on the sign-in screen of Autotex Estimating today. We'll we'll give you the link there uh, on the sign-in screen to my support garage. Oh yeah, you're right, absolutely. Um, yeah, and Bill, if you have any questions like that, um, uh, you know, don't don't be afraid to reach out to us if you have any challenges finding it. I'm happy to help you out. Yeah. 
those are all the questions we have time to answer today, guys. We're at three o'clock here now. So thank you everyone for joining today. Thank you to David and Michelle for your thoughtful insight. We really appreciate thank having you. you here today. Yeah, thank this you. A lot of so, fun. Thank you. I'm really excited. Yeah, well, we're so happy to have you here and uh, make sure everybody uh, you check out Captor and uh, keep up on uh, all the research and make sure you get yourself on that list for that uh, for that rollout period. <laughs> all right. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Stay safe. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Take care. Stay safe, all. Bye-bye.